I am often asked to compare Crossplane with Terraform or Pulumi or Ansible or any other tool that primarily manages resources, be it those in hyperscalers like AWS or Google Cloud or Azure or Kubernetes or anywhere else. Well, today I am here to tell you that none of those tools are going away anytime soon. We need all of those. We need configuration management tools like Ansible. We need infrastructure as code tools like Terraform or Pulumi. And we need control planes, be it opinionated ones like uh, AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, or those that allow us to build our own control planes like Crossplane. Not only that I will argue that those tools fulfill different purposes and complement each other, but I will even make outrageous claims like that Terraform and Helm serve the same purpose. This will be one of those videos where you're likely going to get mad at me and yell at your screen hoping that I will somehow hear you. If that happens, my advice is to calm the f down, since my goal today will be to show you how all those can, no, should work together. They should be treated as a group of friends singing Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, you know, you know the song, right? Happy friends. Now, just to be sure that your adrenaline keeps pumping, I will also claim that many of the tools I will mention misunderstood their strengths and ended up trying to perform tasks they're not, not, not really good at. Each good story starts at the beginning and this one will not be an exception. So let's go. Long, long, long time ago, we realized that managing resources through shell scripts alone is just silly. And we got tools like CF Engine, Chef, Puppet, and Ansible. They all essentially did the same thing. They all helped us manage resources. What made them very, very, very different from the tools that came later is their focus on... Wait, well, uh, how to put it? Eh, there we go. Their focus was on anything but APIs. If you need a server, Ansible can execute scripts that will install whatever is needed on that server. It will SSH into it, it will copy files we need, it will start some processes and it will stop others. It will change values in a configuration file and so on and so forth. Back then, we called those configuration management tools. Then something amazing happened. We got AWS and other hyperscalers follow shortly afterwards. Now, for this story, the importance of hyperscalers is not that they enabled us to get VMs, storage, databases, clusters, and what's or not, but something completely different. Hyperscalers taught us the importance of APIs. Instead of dealing with random scripts, commands, and what's or not, we could send requests to APIs to request resources we need. Just as importantly, hyperscalers introduced orchestration. We could request what we need by passing the desired state to the APIs and orchestrators behind those APIs would make it happen. Those APIs and orchestrators combined produced control planes. That's when we got new type of tools we call infrastructure as code. It all started with Terraform. Those tools enabled us to define a state of what we need. Nevertheless, the name is wrong and misleading since both the tools before it and the tools after it provided ways to define something as code. Also, it was never only about infrastructure, but any type of resources, meaning both hardware and software. What made Terraform and the tools that came afterwards different is that they were focused on sending requests to APIs. They were born when hyperscalers like AWS, Google Cloud and Azure became a thing. What made hyperscalers very different than what we had before are the APIs. Everything available in hyperscalers is behind APIs. If you need a new VM, all we have to do is send a request to an API. If you need to find out the state of that VM, we send yet another request to the API. If you need to remove that VM, we send yet another request. At that time, most of what we could do on-prem was accessible through scripts, commands, manual instructions, witchcraft and sorcery. Hyperscalers changed that. Hyperscalers are different. They can be instructed only through APIs, period. Terraform was one of the first to realize that we needed help in sending requests to those 
APIs. Hence, I can describe Terraform and other similar projects as tools that help us translate code into API requests. We can write HCL and Terraform will transform it into Google Cloud API requests. We can write Go code and Pulumi will help us transform it into API requests to Azure. We can write JSON templates with CloudFormation and it will help us translate it into AWS API requests. The main purpose of infrastructure as code tools is to transform code into format understood by an API. Now, behind those APIs are schedulers that take those requests and convert them into actual resources. That can be easy to instances in AWS, container apps in Azure, cloud running Google, or anything else. A request is sent to an API, it is picked up by a scheduler or a controller which creates a resource or updates it or deletes it or whatever else. That's how all hyperscalers work. Hence, we have four steps process. We write code in a specific format, be it HCL, XML, YAML, Go or anything else. We use tools that transform code into API requests. Those requests are picked up by a control plane which does whatever needs to be done to create, update or delete actual resources like VMs, databases or anything else. Finally, requests are answered right away with acknowledgements or once actual resources are provisioned. As a side note, Ansible and other tools that were created before Terraform eventually adopted the API model, but they were not designed with that as the primary focus. The important note is that Terraform does not act as a control plane, but as one shot executor that sends API requests. Terraform assumes that there is a different process that assures that specific resources are in a specific state by looking for drifts, by doing reconciliation and whatever else that they are doing. In other words, Terraform's job is finished once it gets the answer from the API while control planes work non-stop and they are accessible only through APIs. The API-only approach championed initially by hyperscalers provided tremendous advantages. We all know how to talk to them, what the schemas are, and so on and so forth. As a result, we got an explosion of the tools. AWS CLI is doing the same thing as Terraform. It transforms arguments of a command line into API calls. A VS Code plugin is also doing the same thing. It transforms user input obtained from a form into API requests. The number of tools that can request something from AWS is close to infinite, and they all do the same thing. They transform user-friendly, or to be more precise, a developer-friendly input into API requests. As a matter of fact, even if we go to AWS console in a browser and do something over there, that something will also be transformed into API requests. From that perspective, Helm is essentially serving the same purpose as Terraform. We use it to transform Go templates into Kubernetes API requests, which happen to accept YAML and JSON as request formats. If we ignore the fact that Helm works only with Kubernetes API, while Terraform supports almost any API known to man, they are essentially doing the same thing. Crossplane is also transforming code into API requests. We can define a managed resource like, for example, AWS EC2 instance as YAML, and Crossplane will transform that into whatever AWS API expects. From that perspective, Terraform, Helm, and Crossplane serve the same purpose. However, that is not the point, since managed resources are not why we use Crossplane. That's a necessity, but not the main reason why people are using it. Crossplane's main mission is to enable people to create control planes that act in a similar way as those in AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. It allows teams to define APIs and controllers that manage resources by making AWS requests to AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and any other destination. Those controllers are not one shot, but continuously calculating drifts and reconciling them. Now, it might sound strange that we need control planes to manage resources in control planes, but there is a very good reason for that. These days, that reason is often explained through platform engineering. APIs in AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and other cloud providers are low level most of the time. They're designed to cater needs of everyone. As a result, we need to combine VPCs with subnets, with the internet gateways, with VMs, with whatever else. We need to combine all those low-level resources to get something 
meaningful, like for example a database or a cluster or almost anything else. That creates friction, since only a limited number of people in a company is comfortable with such low-level abstractions. And now comes the important part. On top of all that, everyone, and I repeat, everyone is multi-cloud these days. Now, you might say, that's not your case. You might say that you use only AWS or only Google Cloud or only Azure. If that's the case, you're confusing hyperscalers with cloud services. GitHub is cloud. Datadog is a cloud service. Grafana, Elastic, and many others are all either cloud-only services or have that as an option. Cloud is SaaS. Cloud is when we delegate management of resources to a third-party company and when services are accessible through APIs. At the same time, all cloud services are based on control planes. So we need to create custom APIs tailor-made for our specific needs and backed by controllers or schedulers that manage resources behind those APIs. That results in the need for custom control planes. We can create an API for a database that contains only the needed fields and abstracts the complexity. By creating our own APIs, we can say this is what is needed to get a database or this is what is required to run a backend application. That something can be expanded into a number of resources in AWS or in a Kubernetes cluster or in Google Cloud or in GitHub or anywhere else. It can also be execution of other tools like Atlas Operator for database schemas, dashboards in Grafana and so on and so forth. The point is that we create APIs that define something meaningful and let a control plane convert that into low level resources and continuously manage those resources. And here comes an important note. Just as AWS does not care how we send requests to its API, Crossplane or any other control plane does not care how we do that either. But AWS and Crossplane care only what's happening after they receive something through their APIs. Hence, from the user perspective, from the perspective of a person that needs to request a desired state or initiate an operation through an API, there is still the need to define that state somehow and to convert it into API calls. And that's where Terraform, Pulumi, Helm and other tools come in. We need those tools to manage API requests. That's why I don't believe that Terraform and Pulumi are competing with Crossplane. They are the tools that transform code into API requests. Crossplane creates those APIs and acts as a scheduler with control loops. It is a control plane. So Terraform and Pulumi compete with Helm and other similar tools that are designed to convert code into API requests. They complement Crossplane since Crossplane does not have a mechanism to convert code into client-side requests. Crossplane enables us to create APIs and relies on other tools to convert code into client-side requests. Those tools can be Helm, but it also can be Terraform. Pulumi or any other similar tool. The problem arises when we misinterpret the primary focus of a tool. Each tool can do more than its core function, yet does not mean that it is good at doing, how can I call it, side hustle. Configuration management tools like, for example, Ansible are designed to execute commands, modify files, residing in a remote location, execute scripts and similar operations. They can convert code into API requests but that's not what they are designed to do, and they tend to do it poorly. On the other hand, infrastructure as code tools are good at converting code into API requests, be it in AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, Kubernetes, or any other API, including custom ones. They're not orchestrators, even though many are trying to use them as such. They do not expose APIs to end users, but operate on the level of files. They're not control planes. We should not call those tools infrastructure as code since they perform the same core function as Helm or even kubectl. The problem is that I do not have a better name for such tools. Nevertheless, what matters is that they convert code into API requests, mostly for the purpose of propagating the desired state to an API. Control planes, on the other hand, are designed to expose APIs, 
to end users and to perform scheduling. They watch for drifts continuously. They do reconciliation and all other things that we are already used to. Control planes are, at the same time, acting as infrastructure as code tools since they can invoke other APIs as well, but that's not their primary purpose. They're meant to expose APIs and do orchestration, drift detection and reconciliation. And by the way, they're supposed to do that continuously, all of that. Now, with all that in mind, I can safely say that we need all three types of tools. Unless everything is accessible through APIs, we need configuration management tools. That is especially true for those running their own data centers. We should strive to go towards API-only systems, and we might get there completely one day, but that might not be the reality for all of us right now. We also need a way to convert code into API requests. Using CURL to instruct a control plane what to do is too tedious. That's where Terraform, Pulumi, Helm and other similar tools come in. Finally, given that hyperscalers provide APIs for low-level resources, we often need to define our own. For example, we might need to define what it means to have a database both on the API level but also on the orchestration level. That's where control planes come in and we often have to have our own custom made on top of generic ones like AWS. And that's it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.